I want to add my welcome to those of you that are visiting, and we do indeed have a good number visiting with us today, and you are our honored guests. We're grateful that you're here. Uh, I want to uh, also make sure you're aware of a program we do each Sunday morning called the JAM program that's for our children that are ages three to the third grade. And so if we have children in that age category, they can come to the front and we'll be singing a song in just a minute. Are there, yeah, come on forward. Parents, if they're shy, you can bring them up here. But let's have our children come on up. We're going to be singing a song. In relation to that, uh, this past week, uh, we took about four, there were 14 of us that went to the church Bible camp. And uh, during that camp, we learned a song. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> it's all good. So we learned a song. I'm going to draw your attention to the, the second pew and third pew up here. We have quite a group of our kids that went to camp uh, this past week, along with some others who weren't able to go. But in the process of camp, I introduced a song to uh, those folks. And um, that song is the song, uh, You Say and I Believe. It is a conversation between a worshiper and God about how broken they feel, and yet God says that they are that they are whole. And so uh, we're going to sing that song. The kids learned that at camp this week. I introduced that to them, and, and uh, we're going to sing that song right now and teach it uh, to you. You may be familiar up with it. Uh, if not, uh, maybe by the second verse you will have learned it. Y'all ready? I keep fighting voices in my head that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum? Every high and every low. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Oh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe. What you say to me, I believe. The only thing that matters now is everything. Think of me. In you I find my worth. In you I find my identity. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. And you say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe what you say to me. I believe taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet. You'll have every failure, God. You'll have every victory. Oh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. And you say I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me. I believe. Kids, you may be dismissed to class. In fact, the song of invitation is going to be 902 is the song of invitation. It's okay. I'll get her done. We'll, we'll get her done. 
Two things I want to mention quickly. First of all, in regard to all of our young people we have here that went to camp, I'm glad you came out to worship this morning and, and uh, glad to have you up on the front pew with me uh, singing that song. Uh, I'm grateful that... Yes, sir? It could be any week, couldn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, I, I want to say thank you to uh, David Dawson, who uh, stepped up and took my place this past Sunday when I took the kids to camp. Sloan and I were uh, at camp with them. And, and uh, I, by the way, David, I, I saw the sermon. I watched it online. You did a great job, brother, and, and uh, many are saying so. So I'm grateful for the work you did in, in doing that, that message. I enjoyed it. Uh, also, uh, want to say that uh, Sloan, as was already mentioned, uh, is going to be uh, departing. We are going to have a party celebrating him going away. Uh, oh, wait a second. That didn't come out exactly right. <laughs> no, I said it that way on purpose. But anyways, we are grateful for the work that he has done with us. He did an outstanding job at both camps we were at. Uh, he was a great leader among uh, the counselors and what have you at camp and the, and the youth. And so I'm grateful for Sloan. Uh, for those that you don't know, uh, Sloan is a student at Sunset International Bible Institute. He's midway through his work and preparing to be a gospel preacher. Uh, he'll be graduating a, a year or so from now. And uh, he has been working with us this summer as an intern. Uh, and uh, I'm grateful to have had him working at my side this, this summer. So without any more, I'm going to give you Sloan Curtis. Oh, good morning, everybody. First off, I just want to say a quick thank you to Cliff uh, for everything that he's done for me this summer, for the teaching, for the studying, for putting my preaching right after camps. So I'm rushing a week or two ahead. But no, I, honestly, I do want to thank you for putting this after camps because it is, it is such a revitalizing time uh, to go to camps, to be a part of these camps. Uh, also, I just... Again, want to direct everyone's attention to these people on the on the front row here. This is our future. Uh, the last sermon I preached. This is this is who I was talking about. These are the people that we need to be focusing on and helping to mature. Uh, but again, just camps are such a great time. I encourage everyone. If you have young people, if you know of young people, encourage them to come to camps with us. They're such a fantastic time. It's where I met Cliff. It's where I was baptized. It's where I learned so much about the Lord and made just lifelong friendships. I, I, cannot, I cannot stress enough how amazing these camps can be for the kids. But before getting into, before getting into a separate sermon, uh, this is our sermon today. Uh, it is the cost of my ransom. Uh, this also came out of camp. Our theme for the week was the Father's love, and this just happened to be the day that I, the, the, the day that I had. And it's the cost of his ransom. It's, it's the fact that his wounds have paid my ransom. See, at camp, at camp, I had the privilege to teach them on Thursday. And like I said, the theme was, his wounds have paid my ransom. And I was thinking to myself, what, what really comes to mind when someone pays something for, my, for me? What, happens, what comes to mind when someone sacrifices himself for me? So my initial thought was, well, you know, you see in TV shows and you see in movies when someone takes a bullet for you. It's a little difficult to see, but right about there is a Nerf dart aimed at Gavin Adair being taken by Levi Jackson. There's just a little skit that I had planned for them just to kind of get them into the whole lesson idea. But, you know, the whole idea of that's you that was Jesus taking the bullet for us. That was Jesus taking what should have came for us, right? And see, and speaking of ransoms, we live in a time that's pretty far removed. I mean, we have some things with technology now, but for the most part, we live pretty well removed from, from ransoms, from pirates, from... They're all a, a part of a bygone era, really. Most of us tend to remain safe and secure in our own homes. Most streets feel safe to travel, give or take some, uh, even on the darkest of nights. But see, for us, for really everybody, it's a false sense of security. Uh, secure in our lives, we don't realize that what we, what we have lived through, and for those of us that haven't been baptized, what we are currently living through, currently living as hostages to sin around us. So see, each and every one of us, at one point in time, we have been captured by sin. 
We have fallen into its trap at a young age. See, this sin, it demands a ransom. It demands a payment be paid. It demands a cost. And that cost has been paid by our Lord and Savior by his wounds. By his wounds, we are set free. And so we'll be looking at that uh, today. If you all turn with me, please, to Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Really, the, the impetus of that we have all sinned. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's a quick, it's a simple verse, but it really gets across the point that all of us have been here. All of us are here. All of us, for the purposes of the skit that we were doing, this chair represented being in sin and being held hostage by sin. And see, we're all being held hostage until this payment's made. Uh, Romans 6, verse 12. Some of you might just have to flip a page over. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you, so that you obey its lust. For a lot of us, sin's controlling us right now. Sin has hold of us right now. Uh, for, the, for the part of this skit, I would take hold of Gavin's hands and just kind of beat him up with his own hands. And it's very similar to what's happening to us that, that are lost in sin right now. It hurts us. It does, it does damage to us. And oftentimes it's difficult for us to control it and rein it back in. And so we have, we have Gavin back there. We have him sitting in sin. We have him you know, being beaten up by his own sin. We're captured by it. We're ransomed by it. I kept his hands behind his back the whole time, except for the times that I was you know, hitting him with himself. But what could, do, what could be done? What could save us from this, capture, from this captivity? What, who could come along and pay what we couldn't pay? Because we can't pay this ransom ourselves. That was, that was the last slide. Here we are. Sorry. It's my first time working with the PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, but now we look at this cost of sin that we have. This cost of, this cost of sin, who could pay it? What can be done for it? If you look first at Romans 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We're all owed death. That's what's coming for each and every one of us. Uh, for that picture back there, I had a Nerf gun pointed at, at Gavin basically the whole time I was teaching this lesson. Uh, what we're owed, what we should deserve is death. And the only thing that could have been done to keep us from that is someone perfect, someone without blemish, coming along and saving us from that. If you'll turn now to Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Mark 10, 45, a supplemental verse to that, says basically the same thing. For even the Son of Man did not, did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. And then echoing that thought in 2 Timothy, or excuse me, 1 Timothy. Echoing that thought in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 6, Paul, tells, Paul reminds Timothy, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. Someone had to pay this cost. Someone had to do what none of us could do. And that was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He paid what we couldn't pay. He paid what we couldn't possibly do. You know, we sang a song right before communion. He paid a debt that he did, that he did not owe. There is no reason for him to go onto that cross except to save us, except by the Father's love that he went on that cross for us. And he gave himself as a ransom for many. And it wasn't, it wasn't this suitcase full of money, but it was the blood in every ounce of Jesus Christ himself being nailed to that cross. Turn with me now to Colossians. Chapter 2 and verse 14. Having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which was hostile to us, he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Everything that could have came against us from the near impossibility of the old law to sin surrounding us, Jesus himself nailed it to the cross with his own body. He put it away from us. Our ransom was put up on the cross Posted, signed, dated. 
And that's it. We, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't have to live in fear of sin anymore. Some of us still do. Some of us still fall back into it. But, like how I had Levi during the skit jump in front of the bullet for, for Gavin, Jesus himself jumped in front of the bullet that was aimed at us. Jesus himself jumped in front of what should have taken all of us out, what should prevent all of us from spending eternal life with Christ and God in heaven. He, he took on that sin. He bore the sins of the world so that we didn't have to bear our own personal sins. But see, this freedom comes at a cost. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. By his blood we are set free. By his blood we are given the ability to do just about anything that we want, whether that be continuing sin, though I hope none of us do that, or to put on Christ in baptism. So now that we're free from sin, what do we do? What should we do with this? There it is. Had a blank screen for a second. Uh, but now that we're free from sin, what should we do with this? See, what we should do, what I hope each and every one of us do, or have done, is to accept this rescue. See, the first real instance we see of accepting this rescue is in Acts chapter 2 and verse 41. Peter just got done speaking his sermon at Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has just been given unto the world. 41. So then those who had received his word were baptized, and that day were added about 3,000 souls. 3,000 people on the day of Pentecost said, what must I do to be saved? And the answer is, believe, repent, be baptized. And so they did. See, it's, it's part of becoming a new creature. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. I explained it to the kids that it's like taking a blank form. You know, you have like, you have your puddle of clay, you have your plate or whatever, and you can do just about anything with it. And it's up to us to decide what we do with that. You know, whether we mold it to be shaped like Christ, whether we mold it to be back like our, own, like our old selves before baptism. It's up to us. We're a blank canvas, complete complete with all the paints that we could use. But like I said, what we should be doing is becoming like Christ. Romans chapter 13 and verse 14. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lusts. That's what we need to be doing. When, with this blank canvas that we are now, with this blank canvas of who we are, with this molded clay that we can become, we shouldn't shape ourselves to, be, to look just like we were before. We shouldn't shape ourselves to look like anyone else in the world. We should shape ourselves to look like Christ, having put on Christ. I am not Sloan. I haven't been Sloan in a great many, many years. What I've been striving to be, though I don't think I really measure up, but what I've been striving to be is to be Jesus Christ. What each of us that have been baptized should be striving to be is Jesus Christ. None of us should be who we were at the time that we were baptized. I know many of us were baptized when we were young, and so even just saying that is a little silly. We've all changed, we've all grown, we've all changed and become different. But more so, we shouldn't be anything like that. We should be like Christ. We should be as Christ is. And so what we really shouldn't be doing, though, is we shouldn't go back to our sins, like I've been saying. Don't become captured once more to sin. In the, uh, in the skit that I had the kids doing throughout the, uh, it was throughout the lesson, really. Uh, every new point, they were doing something different. At one point, I had Gavin leave that seat that was sin. I had him leave that seat, and then I had him come back. And then I shot him with the Nerf dart. See, at that point, Gavin was able to leave the seat of sin. He was able to go and do whatever he wanted. But in that instance, he came back. 
he came back and sat right back down in the judgment seat. And I don't want that for any of us. Turn with me to 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 7, verse 22. For he who was called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freedman. Likewise, he was called while free is the Christ's slave. You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of men. Bought with a price. Paid for our ransom paid by Christ Jesus himself. Do not go back into that slavery that we had to sin, but be bondmen to Christ. Be servants to Christ. Be as Christ is Christ. See, it was at this point that I had Gavin do a whole bunch of different things. I had him sit back down with the rest of the group. I had him, like I said, I had him circle back around. We have the most freedom ever on this side of the cross. But it's up to you to decide what to do with that freedom. It's up to you to decide who you want to be with that freedom. And I encourage you all to be like Christ, to put, on it, to put Christ on in baptism. See, just as I had that child stuck in the chair for ransom, we too have been held down by sin. We too have been held back by sin. But we have good news. We have gospel news. And it's that someone dove in front of that bullet for us. Christ himself put on sin. Christ himself put, was put on the cross for us, for our sake, to take that ransom, to take what should have been coming our way, to take the wages that we were owed. Each and every one of us now has the opportunity to leave this judgment seat that sin has set us in. All because we have a Father that loves us and a Savior who took what was meant for us. So know that the King of Kings was willing to pay to reclaim you and accept your ransom. And live free. Live free from the ensnarement of sin. Live free because Christ died for you. And finally, brethren, to those that have heard this message and are still held hostage by sin, as Paul was told, why do you delay? Get up and be baptized. And to those, even being saved, still, that are still saved, if you have any concerns, if you have any wants, if you have any desires to make of the church, please come now as we stand and sing the selected song. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white and strong. No. I'm so grateful that you came out this morning. I'm grateful you got to hear this message, a message of ransom and redemption. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the future. Uh, just as I feel good about the future of the church with these young people standing up here, I feel good about the future for the pulpits of America with men like Sloan who are willing to step up. And um, I'm, I'm grateful for the fact that I can be committed to the work of helping men to step to the pulpit and, and to fill the future. And Sloan is going to do a, a great job in years to come as a gospel preacher. And so, Sloan, I'm just so grateful that you've been with us this summer. This is not our farewell talk because that's going to be next week. But, but certainly grateful to have you here today. If you're a visitor with us today, uh, I hope the time will come when you're no longer a visitor, but that you're one of us, that you'd like to be a part of the family of God here. And I sincerely mean that. And uh, hasn't it been good to be together today? Amen. Amen. May you part in peace. Please sing song number 752. We'll sing the
Father in heaven, again come for thee in prayer, thanking thee for this Lord's day and what it means to us as Christians. We're thankful, Father, for each person in attendance here this morning. We pray that each one of us will be uplifted and encouraged from the sermon we've heard. We're thankful, Father, this congregation that meets here in Grosbeck. We pray that we'll continue to grow. We're thankful for our elders, deacons, song leaders, and ministers. We pray that you'll give them a long life in our service. Our Father, we... We once again want to remember the sick of this congregation, and we pray that each one of them will recover. Father, we are thankful for all the many blessings of life, but we are terribly dry, and we would certainly appreciate a good soaking rain if you can send it our way. Uh, Father, we are again thankful for your Son and the perfect life he lived and the example he set for us to follow. Help each of us to never forget this sacrifice that was made that our sins might be washed away. We again ask forgiveness of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.